Okay, so we're getting really close to being done here. So let's go and set up a camera and a monitor node so we can go and render this out to an actual texture that we can use in our game engines. All right, so let's go and I'm going to put in just a null node down here just to indicate this is the final pattern here. So I'll say out final pattern. Very cool. And I'm going to jump up and out by hitting U on the keyboard. And I'm going to drop down a camera node. And this camera node is going to render our texture out for us. So we'll call this the render cam. All right. And we're going to need to set this up in a specific way. All right. Because we've been working in that unit grid size, I can actually set this camera to an ortho view. So to do that, I'm going to select the camera and go to view. I'm going to come up here to projection and set this to an orthographic view. All right. Now, it's best if we come in here and actually visualize what our camera is seeing. So I'm going to come up here to this little guy in the scene view here and select the render camera. And when I do that, I don't see anything. I'm also going to hit lock on this guy. All right. And so we need to set up a couple of things so we can start seeing our geometry. So first things first, I'm going to come into the transform and I'm just going to move it one in, in the Z direction. All right. So that basically just situates it just above the the, uh, or just in front of the chain link pattern there. Okay. And then I want to go to the, to the view and I want to set this to the size of the texture that I want to render out. So in this case, I'm going to do a 1024 by 1024 texture. And then I want to set my ortho width to one, just so we're all lined up perfectly. All right. And that works because we're working inside of that unit grid size. And look at that. We now have a perfectly good set up camera. All right. So let's go into our rendering operators or into the out context here. This is where we can drop down our ROP nodes. And, and in this case, what I want to do is drop down a mantra node. That's a, the renderer that we're going to use. Okay, so I'll just call this the renderer. There we go. And we want this renderer, this mantra node, all right, to use that render cam that we set up. Okay, cool. Very nice. So to take a look at this, all we need to do is open up the render view. So I'm going to come up here to this little plus button right here. And I'm going to add a new tab or a new pane tab type. And this is going to be my render view. This is where we can go and see all of our renders and render stuff out. Okay. So currently the mantra node is selected because it's the only one we have. And I'm just going to set this to my render cam for the camera and then hit render and see what happens. We should get our chain link fence all rendered out. And there we go. Super cool. Look at that. Now, it'd be kind of cool if it had a little bit of color on it and stuff. And we could always do that in COPS, but I'm going to go and add some vertex colors to this as well. Uh, you can also see that the, if I right-click and go to color correction, the alpha is being generated for us. Perfect. Awesome. So let's go and add. I'm going to actually put my render on pause, okay, so it doesn't take up memory while I'm working. And I'm going to unlock my camera. We don't need that anymore. And so I'm just going to move the camera here. What's going to happen is the clipping planes, for some reason, always get all messed up. So hit O on the keyboard to go back to your perspective, and then hit F or G on the keyboard to get those clipping planes all fixed up. Super cool. All right, so let's go back to our OBJ, or object content. And I'm going to go into the chain link generator there. And I'm going to go and add just a really base color. Let's just go and add something here. Very cool. And I'm just going to do kind of like this slightly blue color, very kind of gray, a little bit brighter, something like that. Just really subtle. Again, we can go in cops and, you know, add more of this, more noise and stuff like this, that to it. But I'm just going to keep it like this for now. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And the next thing I want to do is drop down an occlusion node. Now, this comes with the game dev tools. All right, so you need the game dev tools to do this and i'm going to turn this guy on and take a look at the results here and it's really subtle but if we go in actually change the bias to something really low you'll start to get this better spread and you can see that it basically increases that contrast and that's what i'm looking for because i want a little bit of shadowing where these two guys kind of interlink all right perfect and now I want to multiply both these guys together so i want this base color to be multiplied with our occlusion so let's just drop down a wrangle node here, and I'm going to multiply these two guys together. So I'm going to say the current color, which is this guy, right, because it's coming into this first input here. I'm going to say that it needs to be multiplied, so multiplied with 
our occlusion that's coming in from this second input, or input 1. All right, so what I need to do is just put in a 1, take in the color from the same exact point number, and voila, we now have our base color and our ambient occlusion multiplied over each other. How cool is that? All right, so the last thing we really need to do, I'm just going to pump this guy in here, and what we can do is we can come in and add a material to this so we get just our albedo colors, nothing else. So if I come into the render tab for the actual geometry node here, all right, uh, I can go and add a material right here. But currently we don't have any materials created, so I need to go to the material palette, and I'm going to go get a constant. This makes it so that we don't take into account any sort of lighting or anything. All right, and I'm going to call this guy, let's actually give it a name, we call this chain link uh, mat. There we go. All right, so now let's go back to our object context and assign that material to here. All right, so we go to mat, get our chain link, and boom, look at that. So now we are unlit, basically. Very cool. So if we go back to our render view and do another render, we should have everything good to go. We could save this out to disk and it'll be a texture, just like any other texture. Yeah, very cool. I like it. All right, so let's go back to the out context here and I'm going to pick a location. So I currently have a Houdini project, so I'm just going to save it to my render folder. Call this chain link 01.png so we get the alpha. All right. And I'm going to hit render to disk. Okay, so that basically created our texture. Let's go and into our project here. Let's see where am I? There we go. I put it in the props by accident. There we go. And there's our texture. Very cool. All right, so in the next lecture, let's go and test this out inside of Unity and Unreal and see if we get any sort of issues or artifacts.